Hello there, you loose units, and welcome back to another episode of Spicy Boy Reviews. I'm, of course, your host, Andrew Isles. Hope you've been looking after yourselves, looking after each other, pulling your heads in, and all that jazz. Another week, another episode, another blockbuster, it seems. Let's get straight into it. Today, we are reviewing James Bond, No Time to Die. James Bond is back to stop a bad guy from taking over the world domination or some bullshit. He's dragged out of retirement, or defecting, or whatever reason he doesn't want to be a double O anymore to stop a virus. And the gang is all back for one last swan song, so let's shake things up and stir up some action in No Time to Die. That's right, finally, finally we have James Bond no Time to Die after all the delays, a couple of little reshoots here and there. It's almost like it was No Time to Be Released. <laughs> Witty. Now, uh, you've probably seen in the title of this uh, video, I'm going to spoil the shit out of this film because I don't know if I can discuss this movie without giving away some, uh, some big plot points and spoilers and whatnot. So, you've been warned. Directed by Kerry Fukunagua, uh, who I only know of directing the remake of Jane Eyre, which was, I thought was pretty good, and another film called Beasts of No Nation. Uh, which, and you can tell with his style, it's very artsy, the way he directs his films, and uh, yeah, it's very much on display here. We open the film on an aforementioned monologue from the previous film, Spectre Matilda, talking about an assassination attempt on her life, uh, someone breaking into a house. And uh, yeah, we get to see it played out in the opening sequence here, and of course the big bad guy of this film, played by Mr. Robot. We then flash to uh, current day where Bond and Matilla uh, are away, having a getaway in beautiful villas, and we discover Bond is still hung up on Vesper Lind. That's right. He visits her grave site and says that he misses her and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I only realised they had a few days together, as far as I can tell, from Casino Royale, but goddamn, it must have been a bomb-ass route that he's still hung up on her 15 years later. But of course, Vesper Lind was played by Eva Green, so <laughs> I understand. It's not long before things go tits up and we get an awesome action-packed uh, sequence, uh, pre-credit scene, uh, and it's awesome. It's such an awesome uh, action-packed scene before we get uh, Billie Eilish's title track of No Time To Die. And I've got to say, I friggin' love this song. It's easily in my top five Bond songs uh, of all time, I have to say. It's definitely... Uh, my second favourite song in the Craig era Bond theme tracks. The first one being Skyfall by Adele, of course. This one being second, and then third, Chris Cornell's um, You Know My Name. We all know this is Craig's last Bond. It's very publicised, and as the story plays out, it's quite obvious, because they wrap everything up. Then everything is wrapped up in a neat little package. Then we flash forward a few years, and Bond has conveniently given Matilda the flick uh, because he suspected her of betraying him, and uh, now he's single and ready to mingle. He's now retired. <laughs> no surprises there. He seems to do that a lot in these uh, films. And he's joining his career, uh, his post-career, in, uh, in a tropical climate, getting the old uh, copy-and-paste treatment of the opening of Skyfall. I mean, this Bond has quit MI6 more times than Spider-Man has been recast. I mean, it's almost like he never wanted to be a double-O in the first place. Ooh. But it's not long before we called into action again by Felix Leiter, his good friend from the CIA. Felix Leiter, remember him? Yeah, well, he pops up to move the plot along and to give Bond a vengeful bloodlust. That's right, good old Felix Leiter gets the license to kill treatment, but no sharks this time. We find out that the plot device here, the big evil, the big bad, is a virus that could be released on the world. It's weaponized, and uh, yeah, it's going to kill a bunch of people. Mm. Turns out that it's an organic assassin and this virus kills people but only when they've been programmed for certain people. So it doesn't kill uh, just everyone. And how does this ingredients work for this virus? Well, you guessed it, nanobots! For fuck's sake, nanobots, nanotechnology. I say nano to that current trope. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's more believable for an origin of this virus than some fuck with eating a bat. Also, there's a virus on the loose, guys, and I see no masks in sight. <laughs> Someone called Karen. TikTok needs to hear about this. We also get introduced to the new 007. That's right. What? A woman? Of colour? What has the world come to? That's right. Monica Rambeau herself is now the new 007. You see, Bond doesn't want the title of 007 anymore. He gave it up, he threw in the towel, he quit and retired. And of course, M, being the boss here of MI6, he needs to hire someone else because there's a position vacant and uh, needs to fill that position so he hires someone else. You know how a business kind of works. 
crazy. Now, I'd be lying if I said the first trailer for this movie didn't worry me a little to a lot. Uh, it seemed they were going down that same path and trope that modern Hollywood all does, you know, having a, a female replacement character to our title male hero, and, and to show how awesome she is, she has to talk down and belittle and, and make our title male hero uh, a fucking idiot, you know, talk down to him and such. Uh, because we all know penises are stupid, and it makes you stupid, and they just bloody get in the way. Kiss ye male heroes goodbye, lads. The future is female. <laughs> but that doesn't happen here. Thank God. If anything, her witty repertoire with Bond is absolutely awesome. It's off the charts. Uh, she gave as good as she bloody well got. They played well with each other, you know, a bit of tit for tat, one upping each other and all that sort of stuff, and both getting good jabs in for each other, almost like a witty boxing match. Uh, the script was good that way, you know, like a fucking spy movie. The best scene in the whole film, for me, was an action sequence where there's a big Spectre birthday party uh, thrown for Blofeld's honour, and Bond and another recent CIA agent uh, has to get out of it. And the CIA agent is played by Anna Diamatis, and she kicks all kinds of us. I fucking loved her character. Uh, the chemistry between them was good, her and Craig, because I suppose they did work uh, together very closely in Knives Out, that came out a few years back. And uh, yeah, they're good. It, it's easily the most entertaining scene, and very, very spy. Anna had great comic timing, uh, she was charming, funny, pleasantly awkward at times. Uh, she was great. The only diss or the bad thing about the whole uh, movie is she was only in it for like a split second and then she was gone. You know, I wanted to see more of her. Blofeld also has a cameo. And that's it. Pretty much a glorified cameo. You know that big showdown you wanted to see between James Bond and Blofeld? <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get it. He has one scene with Bond and then he dies. Fuck! Blofeld is absolutely wasted. He kind of was Inspector a little bit, but more so in this film. Uh, like I said, they're just tightly wrapping everything up and just getting rid of all the characters. Uh, like, they finally got the rights to Blofeld, the character, and they didn't know what to do with him. You have one of the most charismatic actors ever in Christoph Waltz, and one of the greatest literary villains of all time, and you shit the bed. We also get a quirky henchman here, uh, and has a nice little gimmick. Uh, his gimmick being he has like a mechanical eye that Blofeld can see through from his prison cell. Uh, yeah, it was quite charming. And Bond actually cracks one-liners here after doing kills, like, like Bond. Wait a minute, quirky henchman with a gimmick? Bond saying one-liners after a kill? Is this mini-series of films finally becoming a Bond movie? <laughs> too little, too late, Craig. Look, it's no say I'm a huge Bond fan. Ever since I was a kid, I've seen all the films many times. I've read a bunch of the books. I'm a huge Bond fan. Always have, always bloody will be. And, you know, I have to say, I have enjoyed these Craig-era Bonds. They're quite good. They're different and they're good, but they are Bond deconstructed. They gave him more emotional ties, more gritty and serious uh, subject matter, a lot of continuity. Uh, it, the films were obviously a knee-jerk reaction to the Jason Bourne films uh, when they started this. Look, it was a fun experiment, uh, and of course they had to try something different with the character because they had 20-odd films before this uh, run, this Craig era Bond, and all those films kind of followed the same formula, um, each to their own. So I get it, they had to try something different, and it was an enjoyable experiment. Oh yeah, the bad guy this film. Fuck, I forgot about him. Yeah, he's okay. He's a pretty classic Bond villain. Uh, from the books and from the films, I have to say, with his, his setup and all that stuff and his motivation. Uh, look, Rami Malek is okay. I love him as an actor. I think he's very good. Um, he's serviceable. He probably ranks fourth for me in the Craig era Bond villains. Uh, yes, I know there's only five movies, so, you know, take that what you will. He's probably actually a better uh, villain, or as in the motivation of a villain, uh, than Blofeld, Inspector. However... Blofeld was more in that film, and it was played by Christopher Waltz, so that's why Blofeld ranks a little bit above for me in this film series than Remy Malik's character. And again, uh, like, I totally forgot that he was in this film until he popped up, so I was like, oh yeah, yeah, he's the villain in this film, so yeah, that's why he's fourth. We also get a Superman Returns reveal here, that's right, good old Bondy boy has a daughter. Shock and horror. I'm surprised he doesn't have a few more Bondlets running around out there with, you know, where he was laying his pipe. It's great to see Q and Money Penny back again. I do believe, as much as I love the Bond character, I think he's only as good as his villain. 
of the story and his team. And my God, I love Ben Whishaw and Naomi Harris in this role. I really do. Their charm and their chemistry is great. I love the Bond team in this Craig era run. I really hope that they come back for the you know whatever they do with Bond. They're obviously going to you know reboot it or whatever. They'll probably fucking recast the role or get rid of the roles altogether, which I would hate. But I would love to see them be, bring these two actors back again. I mean, hey, they did it with Judy Dench with uh, you know different storylines of Bond. So you know, fingers crossed. There were so many uh, callbacks and references to other Bonds. Uh, some more subtle than others. But uh, I, I love it. I love a good reference. I know that's fan service, but fuck it, I'm a fan. Thank you. And every time, you know, a reference popped up, I was like, <laughs> Is the film good? That's the main thing. Is it good? Yes and no. Uh, it's... I wasn't bored. Um, I... It's a long film. It's nearly three hours. I think it's two hours forty. But, um, but I, I was on, along for the ride. I was never bored. I enjoyed it. Um, the chemistry was really good between all the actors. They were really good here. Uh... It's hard to say whether it's better than Spectre, the previous Bond film. I'd say it's either a little bit better or on par with. However, I'm just going to say it. I fucking hated the ending. I know I said it's a spoiler review, uh, so here we go. It will be interesting to see what they do with the series from here on in. Uh, I mean, they wrapped up everything so tightly and tied up all the bloody loose ends. Uh, so yeah, who knows where they're going to go. Here, spoiler alert, we get Blofeld, dead. Spectre, dead. Felix Leiter, dead. And yes, James Bond, that's right, fucking dead. Like I said before, it was an interesting experiment. Uh, they deconstructed the character of Bond, they had a lot of continuity, and they kept it very self-contained, so you can watch all five films and go on a bit of a journey. But I think what should happen next with this series is maybe have a self-contained story. Uh, go back to the old formula of Bond, do all the fan service, do all the Bond tropes that you've had all the previous Bond films and stuff like that. Give a, Just do that, a self-contained story, a one-off film, uh, and even if you want to do cast a different Bond for each film, fuck it, I'm on board. You know, we need a bit of a palate cleanser, a bit of fan service, a bit of the, a tickle of the twig and berries. And there's so much debate of who should play the next Bond. The role isn't even cold yet, and uh, everyone's debating online and stuff like that, which I'm, you know, not a big fan of. Let, let, let it sort of, you know, have its day and stuff. But I have been asked, asked by many people and other fans, and I'm just going to say it here, my pick, especially if it was a one-off Bond or maybe two or three films, I'd say Richard Madden, okay? I think he's, uh, he's probably perfect right now um, to play that role. In the next couple of years, cast him. And like, if you want to see sort of his uh, pseudo audition for the role, watch the show The Bodyguard and you'll see what I mean. That's it. Craig's error's done. That is James Bond 007 No Time to Die. That is my review. Guys, please write down below what is your favourite Bond film. I would love to hear it. Also, who is your favourite Bond even another question, who should you think play the, the next character? Everyone's got an opinion. You know, I'd love to hear it, and we can have a bit of a, a chatty chat and a bit of a debate. And of course, if you've made it this far into the episode, please give us a thumbs up and a like, because your love and support keeps us going, because we just love movies, and I assume you do as well. And of course, don't forget to hit subscribe, because we give out episodes weekly, and we'll see you next week for the next episode, and until then, stay spooky, kids. Mm -hmm.